Hey guys, Paul Green here with Tonight at the Pad. I've got some great news to share with our writers team, Ryan and Mandy. I thought I'd bring you along. Let's go. Talk about three years ago. Hey guys, got some great news about the show. I just booked our stand-up comedy act. Awesome, who is it? Oh, oh, Pat Noswell. Oh, no, he did not return my phone call. Louis CK. <laughs> did not return my emails. Uh, Brian Regan. Restraining order. Well, you yeah, know. That makes sense. No, but I got the next best thing, really funny comedian, Jonathan Gregory. You gotta be kidding me. Are you serious? Of all days, Paul. I can't, of all I can't days, this. you're gonna come in this. here and whoa, bring whoa, 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 Why do you guys have a problem with Jonathan Gregory? Huh. Let me tell you something about Jonathan Gregory, okay? I went to a magic show he did a year ago, and he swallowed a live goldfish and then regurgitated it back up. Gross. So what, the, the fish died or something? No, the fish was fine, but, you know, I was never the same. That's okay. No, I'm, it's good. Let me tell you a little something about Jonathan Gregory. Came to my Christmas party one year. Okay, that doesn't sound bad at all. He thought it was a costume party, and he dressed up like a baby. Okay, that's a little weird, but I... Newborn something... baby. I'm not sure... Oh. Newborn. Ah. Yeah. So why do you want him on the show? Well, hey, I, I just think Jonathan's funny, okay? He's creative. Okay, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. He's been sleeping in my front lawn for the past two weeks, and he said that he's not going to leave until I let him on the show. So... Really tired of him looking through my front window watching my Netflix. Okay, so if you guys could just just think about it, okay? Take a moment. Get back to me. Newborn. <laughs> Tonight at the pad, starring Paul Green. Tonight we have writer and director Hunter Lewis. Stand-up comedian Jonathan Gregory. Starring Manny Nielsen. Drew Nichols in the Greenhouse Band. I'm Ryan Kinville. And now, here's your host, Tonight at the Pad, this is our second episode! <laughs> There's a lot going on. We thought we'd start with the big news. Oh, yeah. It's huge. Huge. In Waynesville, North Carolina. Have, have you heard of it? You guys never been to Waynesville, North Carolina? <laughs> They're real big in North Carolina. Huge story right now in Waynesville, North Carolina. Uh, the town's librarian, Margie Rich, retired after 50 years. It's wow. a lot of books. Yeah, that is a lot of books. <laughs> She's seen them all. <laughs> She's seen all. She read every book yeah. in that library in that 50 years. They're Actually, when uh, Margie was asked, well, what are you going to do in retirement? She said, shh. <laughs> <laughs> shh. But, but Margie, maybe you'll meet your... I mean, you have grandchildren. Keep it sure. down. Stop asking me questions. Read a book. Can I... Shh. Shh. Do it. Shh. <laughs> Don't you know they invented Google like 10 years ago? <laughs> Get out of the library. <laughs> Get on the internet already. Best wishes, Marjorie. <laughs> uh, this was an interesting story. Uh, researchers have found that chimps raised among humans are more likely to have problems as adults. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, researchers realized this when several 30-something chimps were still living in their parents' basement. <laughs> 
Look, Bongo, did you get a job today? No, Dad, I was waiting for my iPhone 6, man. I pay for your iPhone 6! Look, man, me and my band are gonna pay for that iPhone 6 one day. You'll see. Go Bananas is gonna make it! <laughs> I told you, you should have never gotten a liberal arts degree! <laughs> I wanted to study the world! Well, why don't you study your finances and do something with your life? End up like you and Mom, living in a house. Yes! <laughs> a house that I'm not paying for! I wish you never bought me from that experimental laboratory. I hate you. It hurts dad when you say things like that. That was uh, really dramatic. That was really got, really got in there. Uh, you guys are gonna think I'm making this next story up, but I'm not. A cop car recently crashed into a Dunkin' Donuts. That was rough. And ladies and gentlemen, that joke just wrote itself! Oh. Oh, hey, Officer Jones, uh, I didn't see you at the precinct this week. Yeah, sorry, I got into a bit of a jam. Oh. <laughs> well, it was more of a jelly. Oh, wait, did you crash into the Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah, I did. I did that last week. Get out of town. Yeah, no, I did. It was on Fifth Street. Really? I was, I was on Fifth. Wait. <laughs> Both it was Dunkin the same Donuts one! Oh! <laughs> Man, their construction bill must be through the no, roof they... right now. <laughs> that poor Dunkin' Donuts. Oh. Man. Yeah, it's funny. I crashed in. They're like, hey, we need a cop. I'm like, let me hear. All right. How can I be of service? Yes. I will take one coffee and I will write this up. <laughs> so you guys might have seen this floating around Facebook. A woman was arrested after trying to walk out of a store with $144 of stolen eyeshadow. Uh, we actually have a picture of the woman right here. Maybe she wasn't born with it. Maybe it was the Maybelline. Aww. So I don't know if you guys heard about this. In Melbourne, Australia, a koala was actually brought back to life by mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Ooh. Yeah. It gets worse. Here are some of the actual lines from the story. The rescue team started to massage the koala's chest to get some movement into the heart and some air into the lungs, of course. Stand a up. woman from Wildlife Victoria uh, performed the mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and then a team administered oxygen until the koala started growling and groaning and the rescue was a success. That is the most random story I've ever... Paul, I think there was some hot undertone that we missed in that story. <laughs> Ryan, are you suggesting I didn't tell the story properly? I'm suggesting this is a sexy koala story and it should be told as such. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, my co-host Ryan seems to think he can tell this story better. You think we should give him a chance? Yeah! The crowd has spoken, Ryan. Thank Take you. it away. Uh, Drew, why don't you throw a little salt on the rim and uh, why don't we put some shoes on that baseline, all right? We're about to drag this through the gutter. <laughs> the rescue team started to massage the koala's chest to get some movement into the heart, and air into the lungs. A woman from Wildlife Victoria who had previous experience reviving a dog performed mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation before the team administered oxygen. Oxygen and eh, eh, oxygen. The koala started grunting Ow! and growling. Uh! And the rescue? Oh, the, the rescue? rescue? It was a success! Ha, 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 ha. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Kendall and Drew Nichols in the Greenhouse Band! That was some sexy koala Good story going koala. on right there. I can't believe we got away with that, to be honest. I know. Shame on all of Sorry. you, but thank you for laughing at the sexy koala joke. Well, uh, for those of you who saw our first show, 
uh, you know that in that show, we discovered that there's actually already a show out there at night. Yeah, like a Tonight Show of some sort? Yeah. Huh. I think, I don't know what it's called. It's Me like neither. a show at like tonight or... Something like that? Something like that. With somebody in it? With somebody, like a Fallon or something like that. You guys ever heard of that show, like Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon? No? It's probably got some preppy name like James. James. Ugh. I like how our audience didn't know, like, should we say yes or no? (laughs) I'm not sure. Uh, Well, in that show, we actually declared war on The Tonight Show because, I mean, what are they, big? Can't be. They can't be. What, what, do they got, like, an iconic theater in New York City or something? Doubt it. If it is, it's probably in some small studio in some really, really big building. I mean, percentage-wise, that's, like, not even half. So... (laughs) Can't be that big. Yeah, I, I was just really impressed that you came up with all of that. That was really good. I, yeah, I was impressed too, because uh, I, I didn't know it was going to come out. So. Well, during that show, we declared war by sending the Arizona emblem of war, of course, which is a barrel, barrel cactus. cactus. <laughs> Read your history books, people. Read your history books. <laughs> Every great arizona war has started with, with the a barrel, barrel cactus. cactus. So that is a true story. We did send a barrel cactus uh, to Jimmy Fallon mm-hmm. in The Tonight Show. And uh, evidently, they weren't intimidated. Not a little bit. Because we have received no response, which to me is an even bigger insult right. than responding right. with an insult. Right. <laughs> so we don't think Mr. Fallon thinks we're serious. Oh, buddy. So today we're going to up the ante a little bit, oh. and we are going to send them the next most formidable Arizona emblem of war. Lay it on, Paul. Are you guys ready? Yeah. The next most formidable Arizona emblem of war that we will be sending to James Fallon in the Tonight Show. You may have declared war with this very item. Yes. It is the pool noodle. Oh, burn! <laughs> Oh, yeah. You see that, Mr. Fallon? It's yellow, which represents war. (laughs) And if we let this sit out in the sun and dry and get all crispy, and then you swing it at somebody and it hits them in the eye on accident, maybe your cousin, it's going to really hurt. (laughs) Trust me. And your aunt is going to yell at you. It is going to. It's going to sting. I have a box for this, by the way. Oh, you do have a box? Hold on. Oh, look at that. It's right there. Hi. So we are going to send this to James Fallon, and we will continue to send you emblems of war, Mr. Fallon, until you have the stones to respond, Mr. Fallon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Arizona emblem of war, the pool noodle! Our first guest, I'm very excited to have him. He is a writer and director here locally. We'd like to take a quick look at a recent project he has done. There are hard decisions that have to be made. Dirty, unpopular ones, even. Everything I do is a sacrifice to make a better world for my boy. Gray Smith, let me ask you this. If that hard decision comes, what choice will you make? In the pond, in the pond, while the sun don't Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Hunter Lewis! <laughs> Me. Hunter, thanks so much for being here. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that video? That was a short that you did, I understand, right? Yeah, that was uh, The Farmer and the Stork. That was uh, my first film that I uh, wrote and directed. So we did that, shot that up in Payson last March. So it was a really awesome experience. I had little Ryan you over see Ryan here, there? beardless. <laughs> so I don't know if you recognized him, but he was there. He came out. Do a little drama from time to time. Yeah, it was one of those things. So it's a really interesting story. Why don't you describe a little bit about the inspiration for the story of The Farmer and the Stork? Yeah, so it's based on the Aesop fable, uh, The Farmer and the Stork, which is, uh, you know, basically the the theme of that story is that uh, kind of the crowd that you fall in with will affect you, and you might be a good person in life, but you are judged by the people you're with, and so... 
that's evident in the relationship between the two police officer mm -hmm. characters. So, so I should stop hanging out with Ryan. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> literally the only one who just supported you. <laughs> that's, well, now I feel terrible about that comment, Ryan. So uh, tell me a little bit, because you actually met Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how so that happened? So Ryan and I had a little uh, communications class in, uh, in college together. Oh, yeah. That's how we knew each other. Like 112 communications. Right? Yeah, it was. Ooh, 112, that's getting up there. Oh, we yeah. learned how to speak, that's all they taught. Us. They taught us just how to speak. Just and, how to speak. Uh -huh. And tell me, you had an interesting professor, I understand. Yes, we had I, Mrs. Applebaum. Bob or something like that. I'm not sure who she was. was something... Evidently, she had a strong influence yeah, on you guys. Yeah, she did. She was great. I don't remember that professor. She was the oldest teacher we. I don't. I think anyone's ever had. She... To be honest with you. <laughs> she had a cane. I think she had like an iron hip or something. She was like Iron Man, but like an old but a woman. woman. Yes. yes, Iron Woman. Iron Woman. It was great. Okay, <laughs> it's fun to make fun of people who have troubles. No, that's good. Oh, no. That's... <laughs> it was. It's like it was. Just She's had a rough life. <laughs> <laughs> Where does that show up in Farmer in the Stark in the uh, in the Aesop fable? That's huh? that's the sequel when I. That's I, the sequel. Yes, that when happens to me. Up and... You just go around and make fun of people. She's gonna get revenge on me, I think. <laughs> revenge? She has an eye on her hip, man. I, I know, I gotta watch out. <laughs> She'll like hip check you, whoosh, send you across the room. <laughs> I, I actually, I almost, uh, I almost killed her accidentally in class, yeah, so. <laughs> you know that's a, that's called <laughs> attempted murder. Oh. I, uh, no. You want to confess this? You almost killed Mrs. Apple something, whatever her name is. <laughs> I want to hear this story. Yeah, so, uh, so we had to give our final speech in the class. We had to toast another student that we uh, randomly got. I didn't get Ryan, thankfully, oh. because Obviously. I would have known know. what to say to Ryan. I don't know what to say to Ryan. <laughs> really? No one I was, knows? I was reaching out to you oh. lovingly, but you oh, missed that. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> so, um, you know, a, a big part of uh, starting our speech was you got to get everybody's attention. Get them on board. And I thought, yeah, you know those little those little party poppers that they have at uh, Party City, sure. or or random party store. Party I don't tra trademark. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but uh, <laughs> are we allowed to say legal? <laughs> we don't have a legal team. That's so. okay. So okay. <laughs> uh, so I thought, no, little party poppers. I don't want those. Of course not. What I want is the big five dollar one popper. That's like. So this is a dollar, because that's way more than five times she, as big. She had her cane, and I had my popper cane that I walked on as well. So I I'm started... having a hard time visualizing a five dollar popper cane. Can anybody? It's it's pretty big. This is real. It's, this is like a thing. It's it's yeah, it's big. <laughs> so <laughs> you should throw more parties, Paul. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, poppers are all the rage. Right okay, now. okay. <laughs> so you have a five dollar popper cane, which is yes. huge. Okay. Yes. So uh, I started off my speech. No words, just staring out at all the souls out there. Okay. Why don't you demonstrate oh, what that was like? Do you want me to stand up and do yeah, that? Yeah, why don't okay, you stare sure. at our audience the same way that you did? <laughs> That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> Kayla, boom! <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, Kayla loved it. Okay, so Kayla was the student, not Ka the teacher. Yes, Kayla was the student. And then what happened to... <laughs> exactly what a, that, it was exactly that. She was covered in confetti. Her with heart... the teacher? Yes. <laughs> you shot the bumper at the teacher? It, well, it was. It had a widespread. It was a five dollar. <laughs> it was five dollars. <laughs> you cannot control where that confetti is going. <laughs> But is that big? So it got a little bit on everybody. It was, it okay. was snow and confetti. It was snow and confetti. I think her heart might have stopped for a second. Her hip, I don't know what happened to her you don't, hip. You, she, she, they had to replace the other hip. They had to replace the other hip after yeah. that? <laughs> so, so, but she was fine. She was okay. okay. I got an A, so. Oh. Yeah, I don't know now, but you know. Well, there we go. He got an A, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It was a beautiful story. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand you're involved in a new project here locally. Yes, it's called The Palace. It's a, a multi-camera live-action sitcom. Live-action sitcom! Yes, yes. That sounds intense. Oh, it's so intense. <laughs> That's fantastic. Do you have like a website or yeah, something they yeah. can visit? Yeah, so uh, uh, www.facebook.com slash The Palace Sitcom. Uh, we'll be posting updates for uh, when you can come see it. Plenty of pictures, behind the scenes, all the information. 
uh, free tickets, so it's going to be a fun time. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Let's give it up for uh, Hunter there. Yeah. Doing a show. <laughs> now, Hunter, I know that you are a filmmaker, you're a writer, director, mm -hmm. creator, all that, but I think that our audience would really like to see you in action. What do you guys think? Do you want to see Hunter in action? Are you up for a little challenge, Ooh. Hunter? Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Fantastic. Yes. We are going to set up a scene right here on stage, and we are going to let you direct the scene right. to just make it, just to make it pop. Okay. You ready for that? I Why don't you do go that. ahead and get over there on stage? So what we're going to do, we're going to bring out uh, Ryan, and we're going to bring out Mandy Nelson here. And we're going to set up a scene. You remember in our monologue, we talked about the lady who stole $144 worth of eyeshadow. <laughs> We thought, there's probably some drama behind that that we would like to see. So in this scene that we've set up, uh, that lady's husband, played by Ryan, is going to confront Brandy Allen, who will be played by Mandy. Now, Hunter, your job, we want to see you really get the most out of the scenes. Yes. Bring the drama into it. We want to see you direct the actors. Just make this scene come alive. You ready for the challenge? I, I'm, I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Hunter Lewis! <laughs> Makeup of a criminal, take one. Action! I've been waiting for you all night. You've been out shoplifting again, haven't you? <laughs> no! Cuts! Mandy, have you acted before? I'm just... A couple of times. Oh. Briefly. There's something missing. Yes! Makeup, makeup, me makeup. Okay. Alright, Hunter, I just like what I was doing out there, you oh, know, you know. Ryan, I'm loving it. I am loving okay, it. Okay, good, good. Look at that face. Oh, my. Ryan Gosling, maybe. Oh, stop that. You. Okay. <laughs> Keep it up. Yes. Wow. All right. Well, Keep it up. Okay. You, okay. You. Makeup of a criminal. Take two. Action. I've been waiting up for you all night. You've been out shoplifting again, haven't you? No. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. Well, it's about time you noticed me. Cut! <laughs> Mandy. Yeah? I'm just, I'm not feeling it. Oh, okay. I, um, you know, maybe I could draw on some things from my childhood. Like, I had a dog that died and I could be really sad about it and just really bring that out, you know? No, 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 no. Enough of the dog. Bury the dog. I don't want the dog, okay? We already buried it. Yeah. Let's <laughs> keep them there, then. Keep them there. What okay. we do need, less dog, more makeup! Makeup! Are you sure? Because I have a lot yes, of accents. Like kind of got real dark there, you know? Oh, so dark. I just want to get a little darker, though. So dark. Dark. Do you know what is really, really dark? What's that? Besides nighttime, <laughs> it is childhood tragedies. <gasps> wow. Yes, yes. Did you have a dead dog? I Perhaps. do have a dead dog. De oh my goodness, I love it, I love it. Yes, what was the dog's name? His name was Bert. Bert. His name was Bert. Bert, Bert, did he have a last name? Lancaster. Bert, <laughs> I had a dog that died as well. Bert Reynolds. Oh. Bert. Bert. This one's for Bert. Okay, Bert. do. Th Bert. This one's for Bert. This Bert. one's for Bert. Bert. Okay, okay. Bert. Makeup of a criminal. Take three. Action! I've been waiting up for you all night. You've been out shoplifting again, haven't you? <laughs> no. Cut! <laughs> Mandy. Well, I kind of feel, feel like I can act through this. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Do you know what we really need right now? The Manhattan Project. I don't know what, um, you've got to. You know what it is. <laughs> Brandy the criminal, you've just become the evil mastermind, Ronald McDonald the criminal. <laughs> oh yes, I love it. Makeup of a criminal, take four. Action. You've changed so much I don't even recognize you anymore. I don't even recognize myself. I don't even think you're taking this seriously. <laughs> Cut!
And that's a wrap! Yeah! Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Hunter and Lewis! Wow. Yeah, I told you you got chops. So. That got a little intense. Did you, you guys feeling that? <laughs> feeling that? That was some passion right there. Mandy really commits to character. She really too. commits. <laughs> she goes all in. She's, you know, she's very If it meta. wasn't for Hunter's directing, I don't know where that scene would have gone. <laughs> Probably normally. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> would have gone just fine. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, this is our second show. And uh, after our first show, we got a lot of very positive feedback. And one thing that kept coming up again and again was actually about you, Ryan. What? That's right. Our audience pretty much agrees that Ryan Kenville is a handsome man. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> really? We got that from more than one source. And... What we thought would be funny is, as a handsome man, you can pretty much get away with anything. Yeah. I, Everything just goes more smooth. I, I don't pay for, for buses. No, of I course. just get on, to, I get on a public transit for free. I walk out of the store with my groceries all the time. Of course. Uh, I robbed a bank once. <laughs> it was so easy. I was like, I'll have $400, and they just gave it to me. And I walked right out. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's great. So we thought that we would like to see a little segment that, because the flip side of that is if you're a creepy man, you can't get away with anything. Nothing. <laughs> Everything just doesn't go well for you. Nope. So we thought we'd put together a little segment called Handsome versus Creepy. And now, another example of handsome versus creepy. <laughs> the date. First, impressions. Hi. It's so lovely to meet you. You too. It's nice to finally meet you. So close up. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, what? The gentle touch. <laughs> <laughs> that was so delightful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Look into your eyes until the end of time. Oh. Ice. <laughs> <laughs> the invitation. Let's say, uh, me and you, get out of here. Oh, you read my mind. <laughs> you need to come home with me. Yep. That's that's not gonna happen. I have a really nice place in the middle of the woods. Isolated from everyone. Okay, again, no. I got a sweet collection of human skulls. I majored in anthropology in college. But <laughs> reposo! How about it for our handsome man right here? And that is one of our ladies right there. Give it up for Jess. Stand up and say hi, Jess. You might recognize her. Well, we are going to move on to our next guest. Uh, we talked about him in our writer's room. He has been on my front lawn for the past two weeks. Mm, yeah. He is a very funny man, a very warm-hearted man, and you might also recognize him when he comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for a very funny man, Jonathan Gregory! This is the most beautiful girl! 
next up for you, sir. Here, drop dead gorgeous. I cut my tongue on a piece of cheese. Last time I ate sharp cheddar. That was my cheesiest joke. I competed in a hot dog eating contest at Safeway. I won, but I was arrested for shoplifting. I bought a pie for $3. After tax, it was 3.14. Four, five, nine. Eight, five, six. The joke goes on and on. I saved a man's life today. He was choking. I took my hands off his throat. I looked at him dead in the eye and I told him, don't make me save your life again. Chivalry is dead. Just the other day, I was holding the door for a girl, and she started freaking out, crying. Maybe because I was holding the door shut. <laughs> and she was inside of her car. And I finally realized that when I write the words, wash me into a dirty car, I'm actually washing part of that car with my finger. <laughs> so now I use a key. <laughs> and I write too late. I pay a hundred dollars a month for a parking spot. I came home the other night and there was a car parked in my spot. So I slashed the tires. No, it's stuck in my spot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> I like to go to the grocery store. Fill up two big grocery carts full of groceries. And when they ask me, do you need help out to your car, sir? I'm like, yes. As soon as we get to the end of the parking lot, I go, we got six more miles to go. My car's at home with slashed tires. <laughs> and someone keyed too late in it. <laughs> and there's a burning body in the trunk. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed with how little money's in my checking account. So the last time I went to the bank, I wore a mask. Turns out I have a lot more money than I thought. <laughs> they were handing me bags of money. <laughs> I have a friend named Steve. We grew up together. We did everything together. And he tells me man's best friend is a dog. <laughs> really? Did a dog help him move? No. Did a 
dog give him rides when his car broke down? No. Did a dog tear up his couch, soil his carpet, and bite his neighbor on the ankle? No. I did. I'm his best friend. Woof. Healthy Skin, and for Stacy's Barbecue, my name is Paul Gray.